PTV is a free and open source video editor exclusively for Linux that aims to bring video editing to anyone and everyone. But does it hit the mark? Stick around and let's find out. Hello, hello, I'm Jay, and this is DS Tech Media, where we cover everything open source and Linux, but also tech in general. So I've known about PTV uh, for a long time. I saw it early on in my search for a video editor for Linux, and I disregarded it. And I think part of the reason is the name, but the other big reason was the look of the application in screenshots I would find, which looked like this. I just didn't really like the way it looked, and though that doesn't say anything about evaluating software, I truly do believe that branding and designing really do matter, and in Linux and open source, there's often been a lack of focus on aesthetic and design, but I think that's also been changing. And it was actually a DS Tech Media viewer, The Running Man, who left this comment that led to me taking another look at PTV, and I was pretty surprised by what I found. He specifically mentioned that PTV had a new release, so I made sure that I got the latest version, which was available to me on Ubuntu via Flatpak. And I was greeted with a modern-looking interface that clearly integrates with GNOME's user interface and is based on GTK+. If you're not familiar, GNOME's UI design is all about simplicity, evoking the principles of being clean, simple, and intuitive. So PTV is vastly different from the other video editors that I've covered in previous videos, such as Caden Live and Flowblade. And I've even done another video comparing those two. Both of those are based on the Melt framework, also known as the Media Love and Toolkit. Caden Live uses KDE's technologies and frameworks with QT's visual styling and widgets, whereas Flowblade integrates with GNOME and is based on GTK+. But they both use FFmpeg to deal with their encoding and formatting. PTV is also GNOME-based, but instead relies on the GStreamer framework instead of Melt and FFmpeg. GStreamer is a pipeline-based multimedia framework that links together a wide variety of media processing systems to complete and complex workflows. GStreamer can be used to build a system that reads files in one format, processes them, and then exports them in another. PTV is truly a unique video editor with its no downstream hacks and upstream first approach. It acts as a cutting edge catalyst to push open source technologies we love forward. Champions design and usability research and PTV's user interface carefully designed to suit both the newcomer and the professional. To be efficient and intuitive. Adheres to GNOME's human interface guidelines and it is a vibrant community-driven project backed by long-stranding contributors with a strong interest and experience in multimedia. And here we have the PTV architecture. As I mentioned before, it's based on GTK+. It uses GStreamer editing services with the non-linear engine and uses the GStreamer framework for the encoding as well and integrates perfectly with GNOME's GLib and GObject APIs. So PyTV is free and open source. 
It's easy to learn, exciting to master, hundreds of animated effects, transitions, and filters, anything in and out, as long as it's supported by GStreamer. True precision, accurate not to the frame, but to the nanosecond, has natural GNOME integration, automatic project backups, background processing of audio, video, thumbs, and waveforms, and here we are. Go ahead and open my project. So this is the uh, user interface. As you can see, it's pretty clean and simple. Uh, if we go up here, we've got preferences and project settings, user manual, about. You can export the current project and all of its media as a tar archive revert to a saved version export the current frame here's our uh, project settings they keep it pretty basic with the video presets we've got some 1080p at 24 30 24 30 and down here we can change our frame rate we can uh, change our proxy preferences so we can choose how much cpu gets dedicated to transcoding set the max number of parallel transcoding jobs and this uh, sets the default proxy resolution for new projects this is the uh, actual preferences dialog you can set the image clip duration left click also seeks uh, snap distance which is sensitivity and set the title clip duration these are all of your uh, shortcut settings and you can of course change those uh, there are no plugins currently i think they're in development and this turns dark theme on or off they even offer this uh, interactive intro so you click that and we can do the start overview welcome to pi tv drag files here to import them drag clips in the timeline to arrange them right click anywhere to move the playhead preview with the play button export your project to share it see all the keyboard shortcuts and that's it so here is the uh, media library and you've got thumbnail view or list view this will insert selected clips at the end of your current timeline can open uh, clip properties we can take any of the properties and apply them to the project based on the clip got our input capabilities and if we right click any item in the media library you can open containing folder and if you have proxies uh, already rendered or transcoded we can choose to use them or not and delete the corresponding proxy file. If you don't have a proxy rendered, you can choose to use an optimized proxy or a scaled proxy. We can adjust our uh, zoom over here or fit the project. And for each layer, we click this uh, far left icon. We can move them up or down or move to top or delete layer. And of course, change the visibility or turn the audio on and off for each layer. And depending on the selected clip, the clip properties will change over here. So we can actually adjust the... Uh, size and scaling here or by these handles over in the preview for the timeline and our effects that we're currently using appear here so i've got like a little white balance adjustment there whenever you're previewing media from the uh, media library it actually opens in its own window and there is no way to change this. I have tried. I'm not a huge fan of this.
and any click outside of that preview immediately closes it. There's no way it can run in the background in any way. Also, you'll notice that there's no controls on the uh, preview window. You can only play or pause it. Whereas if we expand the timeline window, all the controls come with it. On the timeline playback, you can bring up three different types of guides for compositions and change the time code manually down to what they claim is nanoseconds. I'm not sure if that's true. You can actually change the layout. Just about everything can be popped out. You can pop out the uh, timeline player and when you close it, it goes back into place. Same with this, I've popped out the effects library and when I close it, it goes back to its original spot. Here are all of our effects of which there are actually plenty and a lot of these uh, seem to be freer effects and the same effects that we'd find in Caden Live or Flowblade. The other pane here, when you don't have a clip actually selected, you get these two options, which is create a title clip or create a color clip. And you can enter your uh, text there. And we can change our color and even our background color here. You can also pick by dropper and of course you can select your font change your font size and we can change uh, alignment and even add effects to the title clips additionally we've got basic color clip creation and when we select a clip we get keyframeable volume on clips that have audio and this is basically opacity so if I bring this down, the clip below it becomes visible and we can adjust that to make, you know, fade ins and fade outs. And overall, the playback scrubbing is actually pretty responsive and smooth. These sections here are transitions and transition playback is not the smoothest sometimes it plays back perfectly other times it kind of just freezes up it's pretty spotty overall transitions are not ptv's strongest suit you have a bunch to choose from but they're all kind of just basic geometry and of course reverse the direction One thing about transitions that it does very well, though, is that they're essentially um, automatic. So if I take this clip and drag it, this instantly becomes a transition point. We have our basic tools over here, uh, split clips, a playhead, delete clips. You can group clips, ungroup clips, copy, and of course paste. So editing tools themselves are pretty basic. We can also um, favorite effects. Simply uh, adding a star, clicking the star, puts them in the favorite section. And we get a searchable drop down list for effects right in the uh, clip properties. And depending on the effect, 
the playback can become more or less spotty depending on how intensive the effect is. I'm not getting very good playback with this mirror effect on. But all in all, the general usage of this editor is pretty straightforward and easy to pick up. It's not overwhelming with the settings. Uh, the user interface is actually very good. When we click render, we've got DVD and YouTube presets. And then of course we could also make a new one. And you can go from low to high quality. MP4, Matroska, AUG, QuickTime, Web Media, and Unsupported. I'm not sure what the Unsupported are actually for. Well, we've got lots of advanced properties for the encoding and some for the audio encoding as well. Another thing I noticed was when I was or transcoding multiple proxy files, the performance can get pretty shaky and depends on how much uh, resources you've allotted to the transcoding in the properties. And I think that is about it. So that's the long and short of PTV. I was really excited when I uh, first started testing it out. Uh, I really like the way it looks. There's lots of nice little things about it, uh, lots of surprises, does some things very well, but it does have some major uh, drawbacks. The playback on the effects is not great, even the scrubbing and regular playback is pretty good. Transition playback is not very good either. Uh, if you're encoding multiple files, it's going to give you some problems there. The performance is, is pretty taxing even on my system. I love the way it deals with the cropping and positioning and compositing of clips over other clips and I love all of the little ways that it makes things simple. I had actually originally planned to edit this video using PTV but it's just not practical for doing that and in the end, I don't think I can really recommend PTV to new users or even to advanced users. I don't think either of them are going to find it particularly easy to use. I do think it shows a lot of promise, though. Uh, they could put out a new version and make some changes and fix a lot of the problems that I have with it right now. So I'm not like really counting it out, but I'm just not able to recommend it at this time. I think other editors like Flowblade, Caden Live, even Shotcut, and some of the other ones that I've tried are just a better choice in the end. So that's it. Um, let me know what you think about PTV. Have you tried it? And what do you think? Is it a decent video editor? I would always love to hear from you in the comments section. If you made it this far, I thank you for watching and please consider giving the video a thumbs up and maybe a share. And if you want more content like this, please subscribe. And you can also follow me on lots of other social media platforms listed in the description of the video below. I put out new content on a regular basis, usually at least two videos a month. I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.